Hi there and welcome to the 20th Q&A session where I'll be answering some of your tech related questions and again I've got a bunch of questions from and I would say the depth of questions is very wide ranging from cameras to processors to Android phones so let's quickly get away with the same and the first uh, question comes from Aryansh Malvia and this, uh, this is about internet connection hey Ranjit can you tell me which internet plan uh, will be best for me I watch a lot of YouTube videos and do a lot of blogging and searching. I don't download a lot of stuff but watching videos counts for the same. My budget is pretty low and should I buy a USB dongle for broadband? I currently have an Airtel 699 plan in Lucknow. The first thing is I wouldn't suggest a 3G data plan uh, because as you have told you are going to watch a lot of YouTube videos and that consumes a lot of bandwidth. So a wired internet connection is the way to go and preferably a unlimited connection if you can get. Uh, I would say uh, it depends upon the amount of YouTube content that you're watching. I would say if you watch about one and a half or two hours of content every day uh, at 480p, I would say you will roughly consume about at least one GB of uh, data every day. So by uh, the month end, uh, that will be about 30 GB. Add a little bit uh, room, let's say 10 GB more for other activities. I would say you need a connection of about 40 GB to comfortably use your connection. I hope that it helps. And uh, the next question comes from Sangram007. My question is about which processor only for gaming purpose? Uh, should I choose the Intel i3-2120 3.3 GHz or the AMD FX 4100 that's clocked at 3.6 GHz? I would say if it's just for gaming, go with the i3. It has an edge. But the good thing about the AMD FX uh, 4100 is that you can do overclocking. So if you are into overclocking and if you can overclock it up to 4 gigahertz, then it will have an edge over the i3. But at stock, I would consider the i3 over the AMD FX. Uh, the next question comes from Sankin Dhingra. Hi Ranjit, I am a gadget geek like you and want to make uh, some of my own videos. That's cool. Uh, please suggest me the whole kit, a decent but budget oriented DSLR decent mic and tripod uh, which will be good for both gadget reviews and face to face interactions my budget is around 40k but it can be extended to 50 to 60k if the kit has long term future proof advantage also suggest the video editing softwares and tools that will be useful also suggest if smartphones like S3 or Note can do the same task let me go into the reverse order first thing is that you have asked about smartphones like s3 and note 2 yes they can do recording at 1080p and even 720p very decently but i would not suggest this for the long term if you are serious invest in a good camera like a dslr or a point and shoot something like that that has uh, uh, can take good footage. I actually the video that you are watching right now the footage is being recorded with the Canon DSLR specifically the Canon uh, D550 and it can record both in 1080p and 720p. I generally record at 720p and it's a good camera. Uh, uh, I uh, shifted immediately. I had a very budget oriented camera like what do you say uh, that, those flip cameras the Kodak Z8 but the footage I was getting was not good hence I moved to a DSLR. But again, uh, everything is not rosy with DSLRs. Uh, the big problem with DSLR is that, and if you have been following my videos for the past one year is, uh, it has big problem with autofocus. So while reviewing gadgets or etc., when you move the gadget from one angle to another, a part of that will get out of focus very quickly and that can cause a lot of problems. Hence, I recently purchased this, uh, uh, what is this, Sony NEX5 also. And uh, it is not as good as the Canon uh, DSLR in taking, uh, what do you say, photographs. Definitely the Canon DSLR is much faster. But in video, the big advantage that this uh, Sony has is uh, it can do complete autofocus uh, without any issue. So generally what I'm doing these days when I'm uh, shooting product videos, I'm using this uh, Sony. And for general videos like this, I'm using uh, the Canon. Again, I would say uh, it will again depend upon your budget because again, uh, the thing is that with the kit lens, you generally get kit lens with this DSLR is 18 to 55 mm and that's pretty good I would say. Uh, but uh, you might need to invest in other accessories also like uh, what do you say a dedicated mic for example I like the blue mics and I also use third party uh, voice recorder for example uh, the current voice that you are seeing is being recorded by this uh, Tascam recorder that I have and I sync it up in post so again uh, you definitely need a uh, external mic because the audio that you get with the onboard uh, microphone of these uh, what do you say cameras is uh, pathetic in my opinion 
again regarding tripod uh, you can just go with anything cheap i do not invest a lot in my tripods i know some people who invest 10000 15000 on tripods i generally do not invest more than 2000 bucks on my laptop because uh, sorry on my tripods because i know that i won't be shooting a lot of outdoor activity uh, if you're going to do shoot a lot of outdoor activity yes it is advisable to invest in a good tripod because these cheap uh, tripods can break I hope this gives you a general idea about uh, the gear that you need to look at. I hope this answers your question. Uh, next question comes from Bridge Mohan Goel, uh, which is the best for wireless network uh, security? That is WPA, WEP, or anything else, and why? Uh, this is regarding Wi-Fi connection and securing a Wi-Fi connection. I would say the best type of security that you, you can uh, go about is WPA2 plus AES encryption. Again, do note that WPA also has TKPI, but the best is AES because this is the strongest. And again, I have uh, seen that with the WPA2 and uh, plus AES, the throughput that you get is very good. With TKPI, it is not as secure as uh, AES encryption and also the throughput falls down. I would not recommend you to go to WEP. It's just garbage and it can be broken in about 15 minutes. So for the best encryption, WPA2 plus AES. And uh, the next question comes from Rakesh Sahin. And he asked me, hi, uh, tell me Android versus Windows phone. Who is better, Android or Windows? Anybody tell, uh, and also tell me about Nokia Lumia 800. Is it a good buy uh, now because it's pretty cheap? Uh, again, Android versus uh, Windows phone. Again, it's a personal preference. It's something like Mac versus Windows. Some people like Mac, some people like Windows. As of now, I would not uh, recommend the Windows phone, specifically the Nokia Lumia 800, because uh, some of my cousins are using this Nokia Lumia 800 and the battery is not that great. And the second biggest problem is that this Lumia 800 won't be upgradable to the new version of Windows uh, phone that is coming, that is known as Windows 8. So right now, the problem with Windows phones is that uh, most of the phones that are available right now won't be upgraded to the latest version of Windows 8 mobile. Hence, I would say just wait for a while if you are particularly inclined towards Windows phone uh, and see how Windows 8 phones uh, fare up, then decide. As of now, my recommendation is not to buy a Windows phone if you immediately need to uh, buy one. I hope this info helps. Uh, the next question comes from Prince Kumar Raj. Hi Ranjit, please show me a hands-on review of the Carbon A24 and please also show me does it support 1080p video and how's the multi-touch. Uh, Prince Raj Kumar, uh, as far as I know this uh, Carbon A24 at the time of shooting this video, that's October 1, hasn't been launched. So I cannot comment on products that haven't been launched. Uh, the next question comes from XZX912. Sir, I'm a big fan. Uh, thank you. Your videos are great. Should I buy a Funbook or Funbook Alpha or wait for better tablets in the 10K category? Uh, to be serious, I would say just wait for an uh, Android based tablet if you're buying. Because see, as I'm uh, using this Nexus 7 tablet, this is soon going to launch, I think so in November sometime in India. And uh, in US, the pricing is just $200 for the 8GB version. And I'm hoping that uh, Asus and Google will also launch it at a very aggressive price. Uh, in India also and I say if it is below 12,000 or something like that which I'm hoping they do I don't just uh, go about it that will be 12,000 I have no idea about the current pricing but if it can be priced at that point and it launches in India I am pretty sure this tablet will beat all other tablets in the market and there'll be a huge crash in the tablet pricing segment so uh, if you can wait wait for a month and see uh, if the price of, for this Nexus one is aggressive in India, go with this one. It's a great 7-inch tablet. And the next question comes from Mohammad Rimas and he asked me, Ranjit, I have a Sony WT19i uh, uh, with uh, ICS 4.0.4. Now I want to root it, uh, but I do not want a custom ROM. Uh, I need to keep the factory uh, OS updated, but it seems that I have to downgrade to Gingerbread to root it. Do you know any method to root it directly from ICS? Is it advisable uh, having custom ROMs than factory one? First thing is I'm not into routing and I do not suggest routing unless you have a very good idea. Why do you want to root it? My question is why do you want to root it? Are you having some problems with the stock one? Do you want to overclock it or underclock it? Or aren't you getting uh, great battery life? Think about it. Why do you want to root it? Then uh, if you want to root it, go ahead and root it. It's your phone. But again, be careful with the ROMs that you install. 
but first question uh, you should have a very good point why do you want to root it i hope that answers your question uh, next question comes from devil at work too uh, and this is regarding the law uh, in the last Q&A session that's the 19 somebody asked me about Windows 7 uh, phone and how to sideload and uh, and I'm quoting the answer that I got from devil uh, at work too and I'm thankful to him sideloading apps in Windows 7 phone is possible only if a phone is developer unlocked and these phones can be unlocked officially by purchasing Windows developer account at $99 and then unlocking it using uh, zoom uh, that is uh, a similar application like iTunes for Windows 7. Once unlocked using application deployment, Wizard, you can install any app for which you have an install. That is .xap file. Again, I'm thankful to Devil uh, at work too for providing this answer. And uh, the next question again comes from Sangaram007. Uh, hello sir, my question is about Windows 7 Professional 32-bit versus Windows 7 Professional 64-bit. What are the advantages and disadvantages? Uh, the biggest advantages of having a windows 7 uh, or a 64-bit edition is that uh, with 32-bit edition you have a limitation of 4 gb uh, of memory limit so if you have some applications like video editing or 3d rendering or etc which work uh, a lot better with higher rams like 8 gb or 16 gb then 64-bit uh, os is the way to go uh, but if you are uh, just having 4 GB of RAM, I would say you can just go with 32 bit uh, edition. But again, if you're building a new system right now, I would advise that you go with a 64 bit edition because you can install a lot more RAM. I hope this answers your question. Uh, the next question is a very peculiar question. It comes from Chaitanya SP. Uh, what is the basis of selection of questions that you answer on your Q&A session? Sir? This is the first part of the question and let me answer this. I generally tend to select uh, about uh, 12 to 15 questions. I try to restrict it to 15 questions because uh, as you notice, these Q&A uh, sessions already become pretty long, about 20 minutes and I want to limit them. And I try to take questions that are uh, will be generally uh, helpful to all my audience. I generally avoid questions which are very obscure. For example, let's say somebody asked me about programming language by, uh, like C or something like that. I know about it. I have been a programmer now for about 20 years, but I won't take uh, questions like that. Or somebody asked me a very peculiar questions about microprocessors. I won't answer that. I generally tend to take questions which can be beneficial for others users. And now coming to your second part of the question, uh, what is your opinion about Microsoft Surface tablet? When uh, and at what average price will it be available in India? Can it be a good replacement for laptop users and usages that include light word processing, picture editing, uh, uh, internet on the move, etc., Photoshop, whatever. The first thing is that uh, Chaitanya, this uh, Microsoft Surface tablet uh, hasn't been launched yet and uh, microsoft had previewed it about two months ago but they did not even allow reporters to do a hands-on testing so nobody as of now knows how good it is and this uh, surface tablets will be launched in two variants that's the rt version and the regular version the rt version will work uh, on arm processor like the natural uh, tablets that you found fine but it will also have what is a keyboard dock so uh, theoretically you can use it like a laptop that's what microsoft is touting but again as i've told you nobody did a, a extensive hands-on till now so we don't know how well it will perform the second part of rt tablets uh, sorry the second version of these uh, microsoft surface tablets will uh, host a proper uh, core i processor for like a core i5 or something like that and this will be uh, what do you say very similar to your current uh, desktop but uh, they will also work like tablets and I think so they'll be priced significantly higher I don't know uh, like laptops like $800 or so again a speculation is that the Microsoft Surface uh, tablet that is the RT version will be priced similar to what do you say 10-inch uh, tablets but again pricing hasn't been released yet so there's a big question about it we'll know it uh, pretty soon because these tablets will be launching uh, with the launch of Windows 8 and uh, the next question comes from uh, 007 Saket. Hi Ranjit, I like your videos. Thank you. I want to know, does any router support USB uh, dongles? I, I think so you are asking about USB 3G dongles. Yes, there are quite a few routers that do support USB 3G dongles. And uh, the one that comes to my mind is the Asus RTN30NU. This is a great router that supports uh, 3G dongles and the regular internet connection also. So have a look at that again one very important point uh, about these uh, 3g uh, enabled router is that make sure your data card that you use 
is supported by the router because if it is not supported it will not work properly that's the most important point that you need to uh, check before buying a 3g enabled wi-fi router uh, the next uh, question comes from srikanth nayar uh, question is i want to buy an ipad 3 is it worth it gaming web browsing and watching them yes as of now uh, if uh, i think so as you're buying the ipad you are on the is platform that's the best tablet you can go uh, the color reproduction is excellent the screen is awesome and it's a great tablet so just go with that and uh, next question comes from suhas in future sir uh, which would you recommend galaxy tab 2 tablet kindle fire hd or the nexus 7 uh, the thing is that uh, i don't know in which country you are situated because the kindle fire hd only works in us and it's not a proper android tablet it is locked to the amazon ecosystem uh, so you won't find the google uh, app market that is the play market on the same uh, again if you're planning to buy this in india i would highly not suggest that you buy the kindle fire hd because all the functions will not work in india coming to the galaxy tab 2 uh, i just checked the price of galaxy tab 2 and it was somewhere around 19,000 uh, for a 7 inch tablet and i find it to be too expensive for a Nine, uh, 7 inch tablet I would say just wait for the Nexus 7 as I mentioned it is going to be launching in November and at that price point Nexus 7 would be the best bet and I'm sure all these uh, other 7 inch tablets which are excessively priced will have to come down in their pricing I hope this info helps and uh, the last question is from uh, Manohar and he says I'm planning to get a Logitech C920 uh, this is a webcam for YouTube videos, I currently use a C270H webcam which sounds horrible when uh, using the uh, built-in microphone. Do I need a new C920 uh, uh, webcam or should I just get a microphone? Uh, the thing is that uh, I haven't personally tested it C270H uh, or the C920 but I can tell you one thing very clear is that I would personally go with a dedicated microphone instead of using this on board because there's a night and day difference. You won't get that top notch audio quality if you're going to use the built in microphone of these webcams. So I would suggest that you invest in a decent uh, microphone. I hope that info helps. So these were some of the questions for the 20th Q&A session. I hope you will find them useful. Uh, if you have any tech related questions that you would like me to answer, please post them in this uh, comment section of the YouTube uh, area. Please note that you need to post it on the YouTube's comment section uh, and start it with the Q&A tab. That's it for now. This is Ranjit from tech 2 and I hope to see you in my next video.